Let me take him from you and you can go do your own thing, okay? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Stamp Cat Stamps. I hope you enjoyed my little intro video there. As you can see, I've been very busy, sometimes by necessity, but also sometimes by choice. I had my baby, a little boy we named Victor. Some of you guys have coined him the Stamp Kitten. It's been a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. He's with his dad for the next hour or two, so I have some free time to try and film a little bit for you. Today, I want to be trying something a little bit different. The stamps that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to be learning about in real time together. So I haven't done any prior research on any of these stamps. The stamps that we're going to be looking at are issued by France, and these are the Animal Proverbs and Idioms. Let's look at the definition of an idiom. An idiom is a phrase that actually means something different from its literal meaning. So a common example in English is you would say something was a piece of cake and that doesn't actually literally mean it was a cake, it just means it was easy. I saw some of these stamps at my local stamp club Circuit Books. I was really intrigued by them. The art is really cute. They look super fun. I was really surprised to see that some of them I actually understood what it was. We have these same sayings in English as well, but some of them I had no clue what the stamp was referencing. <laughs> there are three sets of these that were issued in 2013, 2015, and 2016. I just went ahead and bought all of them. We'll start looking at the 2013 ones. So let's get started. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. 
So here's the first one that came out of the package. It looks like some kind of cow or bull coming out of an egg being held by, I don't know, it looks like Zorro, or a person with a pink headband. And in English that translates to, who steals an egg, steals an ox. And this is not one of the phrases that I've heard before in English, so let's have a look at what it says here. Ah, okay. So it basically means anyone who steals something small will end up stealing something big. So maybe in English a similar phrase is like a slippery slope. So if you start out stealing something small but you don't get caught, you'll be more and more comfortable with it until you end up <laughs> doing Grand Theft Auto or something, stealing something big. And there's also another interpretation here. It's not the size of the item stolen that matters but the fact that something was stolen at all. If you steal both either the beef or the egg, either way you stole foods from somebody. Another website here, <laughs> this site is saying if you know somebody who committed a minor crime, <laughs> you could admonish them with this phrase as a friendly reminder. <laughs> so yeah, just remind your friends maybe not to steal. So next up we have a very bright orange stamp. There is a person made of a teapot watering cabbage and also feeding a goat. <laughs> I don't have any clue what that could be or that could mean. Ménage le chèvre et le chou <laughs> translates to pussyfoot. <laughs> What is that? Did I type this wrong? We're gonna need to do a little bit more research on that one. So let's just toss that into Google. Here's a translation that makes a little bit more sense. This says, spare the goat and the cabbage. Oh, okay, so this result says, you can't have your cake and eat it too. That's the one that we have in English. It basically means you can't have everything. <laughs> just kind of a depressing way to look at life. That one should not try to have more than is reasonable. This one says it means Means to spare the goat and the cabbage so attempting to satisfy two separate conflicting people while not trying to offend either one why does everything say pussyfoot though what is that <laughs> never heard of that one before that's kind of fun next we have this one here very pretty I like the color pink and just kind of like the cartoony look on all of these so this one it is a horse wearing a blanket and socks or something galloping over coins what once again, no idea what that's referring to. So this one translates to, it's not under a horse's hoof. I don't think we have that one in English either, or at least I've never heard of it. So let's see what the results say. Okay, so this site says that it means something is very rare and hard to find, and it dates back to a 17th century saying. Interesting. So moving on, this is the next stamp. And we have a very fancily dressed crocodile. And it looks like he's having his cake and he's crying. And finally, I think I know what this one means. So this one is to cry crocodile tears. And my understanding is that this means you're crying but it's kind of fake. You're kind of fake crying to get something that you want but you're not actually hurt or you're not actually sad. Yes, it says to cry for something, crying in a hypocritical way without feeling the slightest bit of sadness. And this says it's from an uh, ancient legend where crocodiles charmed their prey with moaning or crying and once attracted, the prey were caught and eaten. So that explains why the crocodile is eating his cake. Okay, so up next we have two angry looking Dalmatian dogs glaring at each other. There is a bowl between them and also it is raining. <laughs> So according to Google Translate, this means to look at each other in earthenware dogs. <laughs> what is that? What are earthenware dogs? Let's see what the internet says. It says this expression comes from a time when it happened that two statues of dogs made of earthenware were placed face to face on a fireplace or a library, for example, uh, for decorative purposes or as bookends. So this decoration gave way to the expression of defiance between two statues facing each other like an endless silent visual confrontation. So it's kind of like rivals looking at each other. Okay, so a similar English phrase is like looking at each other sideways. So it's when two people kind of glare at each other. I'm wondering if we can just find, oh how cute, some examples of earthenware dogs. It's kind of like, yeah, bookends basically. Oh. 
Well, there you go. Up next is this stamp. So this is an ostrich with its head in the sand, and it has nice boots. So I've heard the phrase with your head in the sand, which means kind of being ignorant, but I'm not sure that that's the phrase being shown here. Let's see what this means. Practicing the policy of the ostrich. That's a little bit vague. Okay, so maybe it is like the phrase, have your head in the sand. So it says it's from a European legend that ostriches hide their head in the sand to believe that they are safe from danger that they no longer see. And it says basically trying to ignore a danger or ignore your reality and not care about it. Okay, so we kind of have something similar in English. This one is cute. So here we have, it looks like a cat walking away. You can see its tail and then mice underneath partying. This one I'm pretty sure we have in English. I'll just check here, but what we say is when the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah, it's translating to the English saying, but I'm pretty sure this means the mice will dance. <laughs> That's a cute way to put it. This basically means when people are unsupervised, they're gonna mess around and do what they want. <laughs> Let's see if there's a better way to explain that. Okay, here, so this is saying that the phrase of the mice dancing actually comes from an 1833 novel. The cat is gone, the mice are dancing. When the superior is absent, the subordinates will take advantage of their freedom. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. This one, I have no idea what it's showing. The imagery is actually a little bit disturbing. There's a guy giving a bowl of snakes to another man, and it looks like he ate one. <laughs> I don't think we have this phrase in English. Let's see what it means. Swallow snakes. Okay, so this website is saying that to swallow snakes basically means to suck it up. <laughs> it's funny when the best ways for me to understand it is to just find another English idiom. So it says just submit to accept a humiliating restrictive situation without complaining against your will. Fun! That's kind of fun! Here is the next one. And this one I'm pretty sure we have in English. The so image shows a bunch of fish looking people all crammed together. Let's translate it just to be sure. Yes, to be packed like sardines. So this one basically means crowded. So you would say, for example, the subway was packed like sardines if you have to all jam on the train together. Being huddled together without being able to move. Here's another funny colorful one. We have a chicken <laughs> with teeth. We have some kind of dental chicken very into tooth hygiene. No idea what that one is. Juan les poulet avant des dents. That has a nice ring to it. Okay, so the English translation is when pigs fly. I can tell that literally it would be when chicken have teeth. It basically means it's never gonna happen. <laughs> I wonder why the French say it with chicken instead of pigs. Or maybe the question is why are the English saying it with pigs? It says the expression is a modification of an older expression that was a little bit more vulgar. <laughs> when hens will piss, which I find confusing because do hens not do that? Like, isn't that something that does happen? I don't know. Up next we have a lady with a fish tail in a bath. Have. The picture reminds me of when we would say like a fish out of water, which is a phrase that means you're uncomfortable in a situation. But let's see if that is what it is. So it's actually quite different. This one is be happy like a fish in the water. That's the opposite. Let's see if we can find out a bit more about that translation. Okay, it means to be in one's element. <laughs> Idioms on idioms on idioms. So basically just feeling really comfortable. The opposite of a fish out of water. So feeling really relaxed and comfortable. If you see somebody doing something and they're really good at it, you would say that they are like a fish in water. They're really good at what they're doing. All right, and then here we have a lady jumping between a rooster and another animal. <laughs> I don't know what that could mean. Let's have a look and see. So the translation is jump from one subject to another, although I don't think that's the literal. So jump from the rooster to the donkey. Never heard of it. <laughs> so it just means jumping from one subject to another. So it just means basically changing the subject of what you're talking about quickly without any sort of relation. And it might stem from an old story by the Brothers Grimm where there were four animals that climbed on top of each other. <laughs> and in part of this 
play, they would jump from the cock to the donkey, meaning to pass without transition from one extreme to the other. Oh, here's the English. So in English, we would say to be all over the place. Say someone was giving a presentation and it was like really disjointed and they're just saying random things, you would say, oh my gosh, she was all over the place. I couldn't understand her. That makes sense to me now. So the French equivalent would be this expression, which means jump from the rooster to the donkey. Oh, okay. All right. That is the 2013 set of France animal problem, animal problems, animal proverbs and idioms. <laughs> maybe also animal problems. We'll stop there for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun learning about these expressions. I hope to cover the other two sets in future episodes. Time to go back to being a mom. Oh yeah, and don't forget to leave a comment below. I'd like to know, especially if you're viewing from a different country, if you have these same expressions in your language or if you have other idioms or sayings, especially about animals in your language and what exactly they mean. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the next one. All of you guys stay safe and stay curious. Bye for now.